The Ballarat Prison Register collection dates back to 1858 and covers 84 years of Ballarat's history. The collection documents the thousands of men and women who uh, went through the walls of Ballarat Prison during the 19th and early 20th centuries. What's exciting for family, local and academic historians is the wealth of information that they can find within the collection. The records document just uh, not just the names of the prisoners but also details like their personal descriptions. You can find out what hair colour they had, their eye colour. Uh, for family historians they can learn what ship their ancestor arrived on uh, and what year they arrived in Australia. And it also includes information about their religious affiliations, uh, their occupations and of course information about the crime that they committed. The crimes vary uh, from very petty crimes like uh, indecent language or the inability to pay a fine right through to the most serious crimes like murder and manslaughter. Um, the records have never been accessible to the public before and uh, us being able to conserve those records is quite exciting because we're going to be able to preserve them for future generations but also be able to digitise them and make the information that's inside them available online to researchers all over the world. So it looks like the book has undergone um, a, a degree of water damage, which has caused mould to pretty much cover the entire surface of the book mm -hmm. and some of the pages. And it looks like it's also eaten away at the pages and the covers as well. So the mould has weakened the paper fibres and caused them um, to sort of crumble and disintegrate. So the first thing that we're going to do, as I mentioned before, is to clean the mould off the surface, so as to remove the health hazard. And when we do this work, we do this in a fume hood um, and this is so that any sort of loose particulate matter that gets kicked up as we're doing the cleaning work doesn't get um, released out back out into the atmosphere and it gets sucked up into the fume hood vents. The tools that we use to do this cleaning include the HEPA filter vacuum with micro vacuum attachments. Um, we use a variety of brushes in conjunction with that HEPA filter vacuum. And all of these brushes have been labelled for mould use only and they're not used with other materials. And this is so that we don't contaminate any other materials with that mould. Another item that we use is this screen. So this screen we use over top of areas that are quite fragile. In particular for this book it'll be the top right corner where the paper air in that area is crumbling. And we vacuum over top of the screen so as to minimise loss as much as possible. We still haven't solved the problem that the fact that the pages are still structurally unstable. So in order to do that, we are going to use a heat set um, repair tissue to apply over top of the damaged areas of the pages in order to strengthen them and make it so that researchers and the people in the digitization team are able to safely handle the book without incurring any further damage. And the third step would just be to consolidate any areas like this on the covers that are mm -hmm. lifted. Um, and then the fourth step would be for us to make a custom phase box to house the book for long-term storage and also for transport.